There always comes a time in a motorcycle rider's career where he has to go on a long distance motorcycle ride. Every man feels the necessity to prove that he has big balls. And what's the easiest way to do it? Well, what is the most readily available way to do it? Go on a long distance motorcycle ride. So you may be a newcomer to this world, or you may have f***ed up majorly on your last ride. Whatever the case is, you've come here for a reason. I'm gonna to explain to you the top five things that you need to know before you set out on your long distance motorcycle ride. Coming up. The first thing that takes precedence over everything is having the right mindset. If you don't have the right mindset, you will not be prepared for the things that will happen on your long distance motorcycle ride. Now, in your mind, you might be thinking, oh, it's going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be a walk in the park. But no, your ass is going to hurt. Your legs are going to cramp up. The weather's not going to go as planned. And a lot of things can happen that you did not anticipate. The best motorcycle rider is one that can accept whatever circumstance comes in front of you. It's basically a sport. You are basically an athlete. It takes stamina, endurance, and a strong mindset. Things will happen. Your, your motorcycle will break down. You will fall off your bike. You may even crash into another motorcycle. All of these things have happened to me or the person I was riding with. And let me tell you, without a good mindset, you will really regret going on that long distance motorcycle ride. So that's the first thing that you got to get right is be prepared for anything. Rule number one, have the right mindset. And the second thing that is really important is having the right motorcycle. So before you go out on this long distance motorcycle ride, you want to know where you're going, the distance to get there, the type of weather you may expect and the type of roads that you may expect. So whether you're going to be spending most of your time off road or on road, if the road conditions are going to be bad or if they're going to be nice and cruisy. The best thing to do is prepare for the worst. So you want to have the kind of motorcycle that can take you through the worst part of the motorcycle ride. So if 50 kilometers of it is extremely bumpy on the side of a mountain, you may want something that's light, lightweight enough and has great suspension and it can take you off road but if your ride's just going to be mostly highways, then you might want to choose a cruiser or something with a higher displacement that can keep up highway speeds much easier. This thing sucks on the highway, but you know what? I'm preparing for the worst part of my motorcycle ride, not the easiest. It can do what it needs to do on the highways, but it won't do it as efficiently as I need it to be. So that's rule number two, choosing the right motorcycle. That's up to you. You know where you're going you know what you'll be expecting and therefore you should plan your motorcycle according to that. Don't do what I did and ride my super sports bike Kawasaki Ninja on a gravel road and crash in front of a kangaroo because that was not fun. Also riding for six hours on a super sports bike really kills your wrists and I felt like I was about to lose my arm on that motorcycle ride so don't do that. The next obvious thing, number three, having the right gear. So. If you're going out on a long distance motorcycle ride through various terrains, various weather, and you don't really know what to expect, then you should get all seasons motorcycle gear. I would suggest a full body kit. That would include an all seasons jacket, all seasons pants, boots, and gloves. And the most important thing of all is having the right helmet. Now, most of your money should be going on the helmet. I cannot stress how important it is to have a really good snug helmet because if your head's frozen and your brain's not working, you're not going to be able to ride a motorcycle. You'll feel dizzy and it'll affect your vision. So what you need is a solid, airtight, comfortable, all season motorcycle helmet. And I would suggest a full face helmet. I'm not a fan of modular helmets, which I just recently bought, which really disappointed me. But a $600 helmet will do everything that you needed to do. But I've also done long distance motorcycle rides with a $250 full face helmet, HJC CSR1, which did a great job. Because the point is you may get from point A to B with terrible gear, but if you don't have comfortable gear you're not going to enjoy the ride at all i rode over the world's highest road last year 
wearing just a BW jacket, jeans, and hiking boots, and an open face freaking helmet with sunglasses on. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I struggled and it ended up snowing and I was falling off the motorcycle again and again and again because I couldn't really see what was going on through my foggy sunglasses. But if I took the sunglasses off, I would get snow in my eyes. I did it, I got from point A to B. I almost died like five times, but I still did it. But that's not the point, it's not about doing it, it's about enjoying it as well. You wanna enjoy your long distance motorcycle ride. And then the fourth step is to make sure you have a plan. Now there's a lot of motorcycle riders, including myself, who have done unplanned rides, where you just go from point A to B, not really knowing how you're going to do it, but you just do it. They're actually quite fun, and I would recommend you do that at least once. But if you're wanting to enjoy your ride, then definitely plan. You gotta know from where you're starting to where you're going and the distance in between. Plan out where you'll be making stops, where you'll be getting your petrol and where you'll be getting food if you're not carrying much food with you. I love to carry a lot of food and water with me. I love to carry petrol as well, some spare petrol, because you never know what's gonna happen. But the thing to be wary of is don't overload your motorcycle because if you have a lot of weight on the back, that's another mistake I've made, your balance will be put off the front of your bike will get um, lighter and the handling will be drastically affected which can increase the likelihood of you falling over. And falling over is not something you want to do when you're solo motorcycle riding in the middle of nowhere because if you've got a really heavy motorcycle with a lot of gear on it, that's another thing that'll happen is it'll be really hard to pick it up and, and you'll be screaming for help. That's also happened to me. Luckily a truck driver came past and helped me pick my motorcycle up. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button as well. Thanks and I'll see you next time.